Greetings to my fellow Rocky Mountain Flycasters. I am tying a cicada today, which it was my privilege to present at our uh, annual Rocky Mountain Flycasters Expo, which we did virtually last month in February. <coughs> this is a cicada. I've tied it on, this one is tied on a very large gap hook. This is a 2499 SPBLB, uh, very sharp, barbless, because my first experience with this was fishing it for carp on the uh, after bay at uh, Fort Smith in Montana. Today I'm going to tie it on a little more trout hook. This is a, a standard length wet fly hook. This happens to be a Dairiki 075. Uh, you can find a standard wet fly hook from Mustad. I'm not sure what the number is with TMCO, but you just need a, a small amount of shank and a little extra hook gap to help to help this fly ride upright. I'm going to start with an orange thread. The cicada, if you look, there's a lot of different cicada species. You'll hear about the brood X, the big one that's going to happen this summer back east. The ones we have around here aren't those broods that last for years and years and years underground before they emerge. We've got something, as far as I can tell, it's called the Mountain Cicada. And it's about an inch long, maybe a little longer. We collected a bunch of specimens of this on the Thompson a few summers ago. And this pattern is just the right size. Now, we're going to dub an orange body. We want to make sure we've got a, a good thread that will flatten out because it is a foam pattern. The orange dubbing I'm using is Senio's Fusion in a color called Flame. Now, the bodies on these bugs, orange is, is very distinct on, on the bugs, but their bodies themselves are actually darker. So this is a compromise to add orange as kind of a trigger rather than for absolute anatomical accuracy here. I'm not too worried about getting this dubbed smoothly. I just want a firm base. Just keep dubbing as I go. And I want to build up some bulk so that the foam back lies correctly. I've left the front part of it clear. We'll, we'll put some dub, some dubbing on that later. The back is a two millimeter craft foam and I've punched some backs out with the River Roads Creation uh, cutter. And I'm going to set this one on the back and you'll see when I wrap the thread around it it's going to bundle that up. If it bundles it up too much and the black gets all the way down to the bottom you'll back off and just get a little more dubbing. That's why you want some bulk up here at the front. We'll increase the diameter a little bit. Now when we put that foam on it, it won't go around as far so it's sitting on the back like we want. Once I've got that secure, and you'll find that having dubbing under the foam is the, by far the best way to keep these things from spinning on your hooks. You can adapt that to your hoppers as well. I'm going to move the thread forward almost to the eye <coughs> and bind it down again. Now you see I'm not pulling hard on the thread until I've actually pinched the foam to compress it as much as I can with my fingers. That way the thread won't cut the foam. Now I'll fill that in, in between, <clears throat> and we're going to tie in a wing. You can use pretty much any poly yarn. This happens to be Widow's Web. And what I do is I peel enough off until I think I've got the density of the wing that I want, and then I divide it in half to account for doubling the yarn over when I tie this. Now the veins on these wings on a, on a live cicada 
are going to be a little bit of black, a little bit of orange. So I'm going to mix in a little bit of orange crystal flash. Just get three or four strands. I'm going to lay those right on top of my yarn and kind of coax it until it's blended in. Now my overall wing is going to extend past just a little bit, past the, the back. So I'll move that forward and tie it in. And I don't want that bundle to be too tight. I want it to go ahead and spread out a little bit. It'll make it much easier when I move the thread to the rear end and fold it over. Now it's, that'll spread out a little bit. That's what I want. I'll go ahead and trim it now. Just a little bit longer than the body back. If you want to, you can splay these things out and make this a kind of a spent or crippled cicada. That, that works as well. But for now, we're going to fill in that uh, front part with some more dubbing. I don't mind that the dubbing's shaggy. I find that when I use a, a floatant, especially the, the powdered floatants, it kind of gets in there, dries it out, and helps this shaggy synthetic dubbing trap some air. Makes for a good floating fly. Alright, now I take a look and it's it's fairly smooth transition. So we'll go ahead and move that foam back to create a head. And for legs, you can use a mixture of orange and black. I've got some orange silly legs that are barred black. And tie a few in on the near side. And then when I lay these two across the far side, I'll kind of measure them against the existing legs so that when the thread goes through they're pretty much the right length. Trim the back ones even with the front ones and there you go. Now you can tie with black thread if you want to but if you do you'll end up with a black band under there if you do, and even if you use orange thread, I like to take just another little pinch of dubbing. And wrap it right into that crease. Now I can jump my thread up until it's on the eye and I'll get a much better finishing knot. And when I tie the cart versions, I definitely don't want to use head cement. I just don't want any kind of a lacquer on there that they might smell. But when you're tying a whip finish down against the hook, it's pretty secure. Alright. Now, I'm just going to come in here and trim the black foam a little bit shorter. And there you got a cicada. You can see that by varying colors you could turn this into a pretty straightforward little foam hopper very easily. And there it is. Marty Cicada from Rocky Mountain Flycasters 2021 Fly Tying Expo.